All right, here are five things to know on this Thursday morning. Uh, Maine State Police are now officially investigating the death of a three year old on Christmas Day as a homicide. Police responded to a home on Route 1 in Edgecombe on Sunday for a report of a child who was not breathing. Investigators now say the child, Mackenzie Handrahan, was taken to a hospital where she was pronounced dead, and the Maine Medical Examiner ruled her death a homicide after doing an autopsy on Monday. Officials still aren't saying how she died. We did reach out to Maine's Department of Health and Human Services to see if the family is known to the department, but officials say they can't comment on the case. A man from Connecticut has been sentenced to 18 months in prison for threatening to kill a judge. Devin Melicher was also on supervised release for three years. He's already serving 11 years in prison for traveling to Maine to sexually assault a minor. Melicher threatened the federal judge and other officials who worked on his case. This could turn out to be Maine's deadliest year on roadways in the last 15 years. The unofficial number of highway deaths stands at 177 across the state. That's the worst since 2007. The director of Maine's Bureau of Highway Safety says more drivers are speeding and driving aggressively. And he also says a third of drivers involved in fatal crashes this year were under the influence of drugs, alcohol or both. The York County Emergency Management Agency will close its vaccine clinic in Sanford today. The clinic was a crucial part in getting people vaccinated against COVID-19. It opened in March of 2021 in partnership with Southern Maine Healthcare and the Maine CDC. York County EMA took over the operation several months later. Officials say they've given more than 100,000 COVID-19 vaccines. And a developer is looking to build 10 duplexes in downtown Blue Hill. According to the Bangor Daily News, the rental units would be built near the Arbonvine restaurant and the project would cost about $3 million. The units would have two bedrooms each. The rent would be $1,800 to $2,000 a month. The planning board reviewed an application earlier this month, but the board asked the developer to provide some more information specifically about stormwater runoff at the site. All right, one more check of the weather, Jason, what you got for us? Yeah, I mean, if you didn't know that there's a New Year's thing going on behind me, what month would you think this would be? March, early April, I mean, 50s and 40s across the board, not even a lot in the way of cold temps at night, but it is January, we promise you, and it is going to be New Year's this weekend and rain is coming instead of snow. That's the moral of the story here. So, you know, a little extra time for driving, but it's not going to be an icy weekend. So you should be able to get around and get from point A to point B. Have I don't a great think, day, everyone. Oh, I was going to say, I don't think the issue is getting around. I think it's whether it's going to be a bad hair night, Jason. Oh. <laughs> That's the problem.